They tell me you're a man with true grit. What do you want, girl? Speak up for something. <laughs> on the planet. Welcome to True Grid. I'm your host, uh, Shane Davis, former IMCA Modified National Champion, and my sidekick, Pat Moore, run a couple of years on the World Outlaw Sprint Car Circuit. Pat, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, Shane. Glad to be here. Looking forward to another great show. We had a lot of rain over the weekend. A lot of shows uh, rained out. You know what? It was kind of a, kind of a weird uh, weekend uh, yeah. with the, you know, the gas shortage down south. A couple of the late model programs got nixed. Um, and then the rain actually curtailed some of the racing up here. Okay. Well, then uh, you and I went over to Davenport Speedway for the Lucas Oil MLRA show. And, hey, we had some great racing out there on a rubber down racetrack. Yep, without a doubt. And with those cancellations, uh, it allowed some of the heavy hitters to come up north and, and run up here. I know uh, down in central Illinois, some of the heavy hitters ran down there. And then we had a couple of, of the big guns that came and ran with us on Friday night at Davenport. We had Ricky Thornton Jr. roll into the track, and man, he had lost uh, last year in the World Outlaw Show at Davenport by one one thousandth of a second. But uh, you know, he got a little retribution this week. Ends up picking off the big win. Yep, that was a great show. Um, and I tell you what, he was on a rail. And I, I was just looking over the weekend, and I think Ricky um, is in the top four in in Lucas Oil points. Uh, so it was great to have him here, and and they put on a phenomenal show. Now, Pat, uh, you know, when I used to run on a rubber down racetrack, it didn't have a lot back when we were on the uh, modified tour. Uh, I could smell the rubber in the car, but I guess I didn't realize that uh, up in the broadcast booth, we could smell it Friday night. Uh, I had fans text me, yeah. said they could smell it. Now, when you were running sprints on a rubber down track, you could smell it. Yeah, that was one of the first ways that, that um, you're able to smell it in a sprint car. We're able, able to tell where they do lay rubber. And with the sprint cars, we have a little bit softer tires and spin them a little bit faster at times. Uh, and so it can be patchy, but that's one of the first indicators that there is rubber being laid down is you can smell it. And I know you and I were talking about it Friday night for that show. Um, but even despite the fact that it was kind of rubber down, uh, it still was a heck, heck of a show. It was. Yeah. Uh, great show all around, and uh, we got some uh, cool racing coming up next weekend, Friday night at Davenport. We're going to have your guys in town, some That's open right. wheels. That's right. Badger Midget's first time since 1997. Uh, the the heavy hitters from Wisconsin, Illinois, um, and then uh, Mike Raymond's car from here in town is actually won the opening race with Badger. They're on a tear. They're going to be there without a doubt. Um, and so first time since 1997 that the uh, the midgets are going to run at Davenport on the quarter. I tell you what, I can't wait. Uh, you can check all that out at www.bmara.com. And with that being said, we got to pay the bills, though, Pat. we got a sponsor tonight? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, all right. Um, Dunright TV and Security Solutions providing the best technology and award-winning service. When it comes to the safety and security of your home or business, you want it done right. Give Kelly a call at 563-355-7490, donerighttv.com forward slash security. They have uh, ring video doorbells, go control smart garage doors, which are really cool, and also uh, smart security lighting. Dunright TV and Security Solutions, 563-355-7490. Give them a call there um, when it comes to doing it right. You want it done right, especially when it comes to security. You can check them out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And, hey, I have really been looking forward to this show all week. we got a very special guest with us tonight. Yes, we do. And we got Spencer Dirks. Now, Spencer, I call you Superman, but your shirts, I'm wearing one of your shirts, uh, has uh, what double trouble? That's what are we right. going to go by, Spence? That's double right. trouble sure. or whatever I want to call you? Whatever you want to call. All right. It. Yes. Welcome like to the show, it. Spencer. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Hey, uh, let's roll the clock back and kind of fill in a couple of gaps. You come from a long line of racing people in your family. Uh, tell us, you know, Dennis Dirks. We remember he used to run uh, Open Wheel Modified. His brother ran Open Wheel Modified. They love Ford cars. You know, I do remember that. And Al, the chiropractor, he ran NX Legend cars. Uh, tell us a little bit about where your love for racing came from. Um, a lot of it came from, um, well, I mean, from my dad and my brother. But 
um, just being around it. I guess I just, um, they always used to tell me stories that I, when my dad, my mom would take me to the Davenport Fairgrounds, I always loved the dirt late models more than the uh, asphalt stuff just because, I don't know why, I don't remember, but. You're a dirt it, guy, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, All right. um, yeah, I've been, I've just been around it my whole life, so. That's, I kind of just, it was kind of in my blood. But. Very cool. Now, your dad, Steve, he never raced. No, he did. He, he raced. Did. Okay. Um, he raced asphalt, uh, asphalt late models. He was pretty good. He just, he was, he was coming up with business and stuff like that. So he never had the, really had the opportunity. And then um, he was diagnosed with diabetes or whatever. So that was a, I mean, a, a hard, hard yeah. deal for him. But, um, but yeah, that, I think he loves, watching and being a part of it and and running you know what i mean doing his thing that way rather than being in the car or whatever because he he was he's so good at it with uh when he was with my brother you know what i mean get my brother to the next level and then obviously yeah you know i mean uh with me getting whatever we need or whatever you know what i mean to make us go fast so no justin uh you know he drove the number 29 car yep and uh, you know he was a very talented driver himself. Yep. What's Justin doing these days? Um, so he owns Dirks Limited, which is my dad's. Um, uh, well, it was my dad's brother business or whatever, but now it's my brothers and okay. uh, my sister in law Kelly. Um, but they so they do the concrete <coughs> foundations, whatever for right. new residential homes or, or commercial stuff uh, here in the Quad Cities. Um, so yeah, that's and then uh, taking care of his three monsters. Yeah, got three beautiful kids. So oh they, uh, my God, that's he's, great. he's got his hands full because they're yeah. uh, they're full of energy. So. Yeah, they are. So the Lawns Unlimited business belongs to that's my uncle, um, and then uh, my cousin Brett and yeah. uh, my aunt Cindy. Uh, okay. um, but yeah, that's uh, them. And I remember uh, driving through McCausen one day. It was kind of funny. Jeff Morris. I was telling him I wanted to buy a jukebox, and he said, "Well, hey, I know where there's a uh, jukebox for sale." Your grandma and grandpa, right. they used to be in the trucking business. Yep, yep. They had an old, uh, I still got the jukebox. He said, uh, uh, well, one of the Dirks has got that. And he says, they started the whole business ordeal in the Dirks family. We went over there. Those people were so nice that, uh, you know, by the time I walked out the door, they didn't want me to pay them yeah. for it. They were just, <laughs> just wanted to get it out of the house and got that thing home. And I got to tell you, to this day, it's still working. And I got a little five-year-old granddaughter that, uh, you know, loves listening to that stuff. So yeah. thanks to grandma and grandpa. <laughs> and they're still living out in McCausland. Uh, no, my okay. my grandpa actually passed away um, a couple years back. But uh, my grandma is uh, living in uh, Long Grove with my aunt. Okay. So, nice. Yep. All right. Very nice. So Justin, uh, or, uh, or Spencer, Spencer, Justin, here I was talking to your brother for a minute. So Spence, uh, you know, I, you know, I told you I've watched thousands of drivers through the years, uh, you know, drive on dirt, asphalt, all that stuff. I was around a lot of them. I, I toured, uh, you know, on the national circuit. But I can tell you, uh, th this takes nothing away from anybody in your family. But you have been a get, been given a, a gift from God. You have got that God-given talent. And you are just a blast to watch on the racetrack. So when Pat and I were talking about that restart and the modified Friday night, I mean, yep. that was just... Hammer down, take her to yep, the high we'll side. Down down. Classic uh, Spencer Dirks. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate it. But yeah, I just, I, uh, I don't know. I, I love it. I just, anything I can do to get better or whatever, and just and and to make my team, you know, what I mean, better and and to be out there to take it to the next level. It's, you know, you know, I mean, I want to do it. So it's just, I don't know. I love it. So I obviously I want to be the best I possibly can be. So that's good. I think one, one of the really impressive things to um, Shane is to take that to the next level um, is that not only is Spencer, not only are you, are you top quality in, in the modifieds, but you guys also have a full super late model program as well. And it's not an afterthought. It's not a back of the pack. You guys are absolutely extremely competitive no matter where you go. Against no matter whom you're running against, so yeah, we we've struggled, we've we've struggled for years or whatever, but we're finally trying to we're putting something together here. We yeah. we've put our we've got our scars and you know what I mean we've been through our battles. So we two weeks ago we went up north and I mean got our butts whooped up there, but 
we came down here Friday and ran pretty good. So, but that was the against the World of Outlaws in exactly. Wisconsin, right? Yes. So, exactly. and if I remember right, the week before that, you ran in yeah. the the uh, Hawkeye One Hundred, yes, and had an outstanding show. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. tell us about that. Tell us about um, the, your, your run at the Hawkeye 100. So we, the, prior to that, we made a bunch of changes on the car. Um, uh, uh, help uh, from help from CDR and and uh, Ryder and and Donnie or whatever. Um, or down in Louisiana, but uh, we had a bunch of help from them, <coughs> just giving us some tips and stuff like that. Um, just placement of stuff and and getting everything. You know, I mean, just a bunch of confidence stuff basically. And and went up there and. They helped us out through some things and and had a good run on the first feature, um, and then the second feature they reline you up or whatever, and and we were able to you know I mean once you start up there it's it, it gives you a big it makes you nervous but you get a big confidence boost yeah. to who you're running with and we were third there for a while but my tire I mean it started it took rubber a little bit and my tire was gone so I was, still I was ended up. On. Fourth, fourth, yeah, right? And Spence up at Boone. How do you like that track? I've only been there twice, so that yeah. was my second time. But it's it's awesome. But um, uh, it's it's wild. So yeah. it, it's you know, I mean, it, it's a different it's a different atmosphere. It's a different dirt. Even though it's only a couple hours away, it was different. It's you know, different. Absolutely. And it looks like black farm dirt. I mean, you can run absolutely. right down there on the tires and pound it in. Absolutely. And it's a very wide race track, or you can run way up there on the cushion. So. And you know, for you to work that way up to work your way up to fourth place, I mean, here we give you a rundown. Uh, Shannon Babb picks up the win. Heckin' Ast was second. Yep. Tyler Bruning third, mm -hmm. and then Spencer Dirks. Yeah, man, that's a hell of a run. It, it, especially it. since it's it's a family-owned team, yeah. so you guys don't have. Um, and and I know the Dirks. I, you know, I've known Spencer actually. Spencer backstory. Um, I've known Spencer his whole life. Um, he, his, he grew up with, um, with my older son, Duncan. And yeah. so I've known Spencer since he was in preschool. Yep. Uh, so I've seen him come up, um, through the ranks and to have, he's got a phenomenal family. You you have a, a great family behind you. Uh, but to see a family owned operation like that run in the top five against the world of outlaws is, yeah. is impressive. It's very impressive. Appreciate it. You know, best of the best. Absolutely. Man, what a show. Absolutely. So, Spence, you're 24 years old. Yes. My God, you got 24, and look what you've accomplished so far. Getting you know there. that was—it's just amazing. You know, it—it's it, uh, uh, just kind of a testament to your whole family and you know how their dedication. So, you're modified. Let's talk about that. That's a rage uh, yep. race car. Okay. And is that a rage by precision? Yes. So okay. that's yep. I I was that's my first modified I've ever. Uh, owned or whatever. You know, yeah. um, I've never. I, I drove a modified for um, Nate and uh, Nate uh, Nate Hall and Mike Wells or whatever right, last right. year just to get my feet wet. They wanted. You know, I mean, they sure. wanted somebody to step in. So I was. We had a little bit of a hiatus in between with the late model stuff, and so I was like, yeah, you know, you know, I'll come and drive, and I absolutely loved it. And next thing you know, we're you know, I mean, we got one over the off season, and that was the first modified that we've ever had. So Man. yeah, I went with Andy just cause I didn't know anything about it modified. You know, right. my family, nobody on my team does. Um, so we had to go with some, some people that we could trust to, to get us in the right direction right away. You know I mean? A good box to start off sure. with and, and it's been good so far. Yep. So. And man, when you look at the Eckridge family and the, you know, the success they've had over the years, uh, they're, you know, they're just top notch and they've Absolutely. got the chassis figured out. They've got shock yeah. packages figured out. And you know, you tell them, "Hey, I'm going to run here on Friday." They're on Saturday, and they can yeah. tell you what direction to go. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, talk about your approach. So, we're talking about modified. So, Friday night, you run the modified at Davenport. You ran, and actually, unfortunately, the track took rubber. But tell right. us, tell us about about the the Friday night show. Um, it, it took rubber, but it was still um, well, it took rubber. It kind of it, it wasn't the greatest, but um, we made the best of it. It it uh. I mean, we were up there, you know, I mean, we timed in and timed in really well, which was kind of coming into that night um, was a big plus because I haven't been timing in very well. Um, uh, I you can't start third row with them guys. Sure. You know I mean, and be start 16th. I mean, other than Alverson, who moved up to the field, but yeah. um, he's just a special kind, you know, what I mean? but other than him, there wasn't a lot of passing, you know what I mean? So right. you got to be able to start up there. You got to be able to save your equipment. I mean, uh, even in a 30 lap race, obviously I blew a tire, so I didn't save enough. But yeah. um, you got you got to be in you got to be up there right away, right? You got to unload good, 
without a doubt. Now, I'm so, looking at Scott Fusel. He just made a comment here. He said, uh, young man is a wheel, man. Thanks for choosing Rage Chassis Spence. There yep. you go. <laughs> so, man, those things. Uh, so, you know, they, talking about the modified, um, and, and, and another one of the things that I appreciate about you is, is that you could have left the modified at home Friday night. Right. Right, because it was not a point show. Is that correct? Or was it a point show? Not okay. a point show. So, and, and that's what I've noticed is is a lot of, of the guys would have just brought the late model, run the late model, not worried about the modified, but you're there with both. Yeah. You were the only guy with both. Yeah. So not only did you run fourth in the modified, but then you had to jump out of that right into the late model. And they actually held up the start of the late right. model program to give you time. I'll tell you what, Shane, I was tired for him. Yes. And I think I actually said to Shane, I said, you can tell he's young because yeah. I'd be like, no. <laughs> hey, Dad, no. load the late model. Yeah. We're just no, I know. Yeah. So tell us about your approach. How is your approach different jumping into the late model versus jumping out of the modified? Um, modified, you just have to be cautious when you go. I've learned that because I, last year I did. I ran a late model show, and then I went out, went, out, went out there with the late modified, driving it just like it. You know what I mean? And you can't do that. It's Even though they are similar, the race car is a race car, but it's still it's different. You're on a smaller tire, you're a lot less motor, you know what I mean? Um, everything just happens a lot slower, so you can't go in there and just whip it around. Whereas that late model, you're just aggressive. If you don't, if you don't get out there and act like somebody just beat you up or whatever, you might as well just keep it on the trailer because it's you're not going to run good. So, Spence, I've always said you look like you're out there driving with your hair on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, you're aggressive and you're fun to watch. Right. And, uh, you know, I'd say you know I like watching Bobby Pierce. I like watching Spence. They. You know, you both, you're hammered down, we're taking her to the yeah. front. But now in that modified, you got 604 crate in that thing. Yep. You're on a 10-inch tire. And when you jumped out of that modified and got in that late model, so even though you're typically more aggressive in the late model, lap number one, since you just run all those laps in that mod, were you a little cautious heading into the first turn just to kind of feel it out? Yeah, I wouldn't say I was cautious. I was just more... Um, uh, Kind of trying to figure out where I was at. But, <laughs> no, yeah. I, I I was ready to go. Honestly, I I knew I had, I j I have some confidence in that car now. So yeah. I I just nice. I kind of know what it's gonna do. I I ran enough laps to that was the thing. I in the heat race, uh, my dad always tells me. I mean, I I'm always I excel in longer races. Okay. The longer the race runs, the better I get because I get more comfortable. You know what I mean? I start to feel the race car. You know what I mean? So. The more laps I get, the you know what I mean, and it's Davenport, so I I kind of know where to go. Yeah, I mean, but all right, home hey, field advantage. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we talked a little bit about this, but uh, you know, it would have been May eighth, uh, Mississippi Thunder uh, at Fountain City, Wisconsin. You still you made the show. It was a World Outlaw show. Uh, you know, you had an eighteenth on night number one, a fifteenth night two. I mean, I. Uh, I'm impressed with that because Without a doubt. you made the show. World yeah. Outlaws, dude. <laughs> you, you got the best of the best uh, running there. And yeah. yet, you know, 24-year-old Spencer Dirks put her in a big dance. Yeah, absolutely. There's a there's a lot of tough guys that went home, and Without it was a, a big doubt. confidence booster. Even though, like, it says 18th and 15th, it's it's not that. It's, like you said, it's making the show. You're you're cutting your teeth in a place I've never been. Right. Um, And, you know what I mean, you're getting your battle wounds. You know what I mean? And then when you come back home, you know what I mean? You're ready because this is your home turf. You know yeah. what I mean? So you gotta defend it. Exactly. So it, it's a big confidence booster. So yeah. how do you prepare for a place that you've never been to before with the late model? Um, I don't know. I it's it's hard to say because you in most late model shows you only you only get a couple hot laps, meaning mm -hmm. you get three laps around the track, and then you got to go out there and set the world on fire for qualifying. So it's hard. It really is. You get you get out there and um, you kind of just got to wing it. Honestly, I, it sounds stupid, but you just got to go in as hard as you possibly can, no matter what. So, and if you don't, I mean, it's going to cost you, you're going to end up in the third or fourth row of qualifying heat. And that's not where you want to be. So Spence out there in time trials, uh, Friday night, you know, it was amazing because the track was getting blown off early and you weren't, you know, you weren't the first car out there. Right. So by the time you got out there, uh, you know, they'd burn up a lot of the top side of the racetrack, but man, one and two, you're able to get right up there on a the cushion, and just because you're familiar with the racetrack, Absolutely. you came off like a bullet, and yeah. your time, you know, was you were fast. Yeah, I, I mean, even though the track was getting partially uh, right. used up, 
And tell the fans a little bit about uh, something. You know, when you go to a track you've never been to before, uh, you know, nobody's going to walk up and say, hey, Spence, uh, you want to pull this gear? Yeah. You want to do this? Make sure you got this shock package on. Nobody's talking. No. They ain't telling you nothing. You're a young kid. They want yeah. you to, uh, you know, earn respect. Absolutely. And uh, so, man, thank God you got a guy like your dad around and, and a crew that they are pretty good guessers. Absolutely. Yeah, we, I mean, they'll, you got to build enough. I think I have a good enough relationship with some people or whatever to ask them some, per, you know, I mean, some information like that. But otherwise, no, you're not going to walk up to a certain someone, I mean, I don't and ask them information on anything like that. Because the thing is, is you're racing for money. And some of these guys, most of these guys, they race for a living. Yeah. Sure. I mean, so they're, that's like walking in, I mean, their locker room. You're not going to walk in their locker room and just, and take what they got. Because yeah, if you do, happen. you're probably, <laughs> something's going to happen to you. So. Sure. <laughs> Makes a big difference. Yeah. Now, Kelly's seen the picture of that tire you ran Friday night when you got the flight. You're running fourth. I think, man, Spence, you're going to have a good run tonight. And, you like many people, man. That right rear gave up yeah. on you. And when you pulled down the uh, the pit area and they pulled that right rear off, I looked at it and I could see cords on that right rear. Yeah. And I said, "Oh my God, that thing! <laughs> it's beyond used." Oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it it was paper thin when I pulled it off the the, uh, <laughs> the rim here a little bit ago. So. You know, here Kelly, he he wanted to get an uh, autograph uh, and hang it up in the studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think we still should do that. Yep, I'll yeah. bring it in. <laughs> Got to bring it by one of these yep. days. That was funny. But, uh, you know, you, like many others, uh, you know, had flats. And, uh, you know, I felt sorry for the late model and the mod but guys both because, you know, the right side tires had to been. I mean, what did it do to your right front on the mod? It, it did, on the mod, it just feathered it really bad. So, okay. but even with that, even when you feather it that bad, you're not going to get your edge back. So it's junk. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're it's just even, or if you get it that hot, you know I mean, them tires aren't. You get something that hot, they ain't, it takes all the all the chemicals out of it or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? It ruins yeah. it. And you give that one to Jeff Moore. So yeah. Put it on <laughs> hey, I got a tire for you. Yeah. And they say, is it sealed over? Oh, no. No, no I'd, don't put worry this, about it. I'd put this on your right rear if I were you. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah, and I know that's that's one of the issues that we always have with the sprint cars is is a, going through a heat cycle. And I've seen some of the other classes that, that can heat cycle tires, and they still perform. They may right. not fire right away, but I know with the, with the sprint car, Depending upon the compound of the tire, there are times when a, when you can seal a tire over, and it's almost like heat treating the outside where it won't come back through. So right. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. When I look at the uh, schedule, you know, back on April 4th, uh, you know, at Davenport Speedway, you got the heat in the feature when in your modified, you came back April 16th, and uh, I think you got the feature when in the modified, but Lucas Oil, uh, you may have missed that by one spot getting in the feature. Yeah, I missed it by one. Yeah, that, that yeah. it happens. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, April 24th at Davenport, you had a first place uh, run. So I was looking forward to Saturday night going up to West Liberty, getting on that big half mile yeah. and seeing, yeah. uh, you know, how the guys could get her done up there because yeah. you've got a lot of experience up there too, Spence. But unfortunately, uh, Mother Nature didn't cooperate. Uh, well, they had Maybe it, it did, I guess. Huh? It saved a bunch of tires. Right? Saved yeah. a bunch of tires. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Seriously. Exactly. And actually, if, if I can for a second, I'll tell you what. My very first World of Outlaw late model race was Dubuque, and I, I went and looked it up. Dubuque, 2018. Wow. The very first time I ever went to a, a – and keep in mind that, that huh. you know, I spent most of my time, and Spencer knows where I'm going with yeah. this, uh, I spent most of my time chasing sprint cars. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I like them, and, and, you know, I've always, I have a huge appreciation for, for late models and, and that, that level of, of cars, but I've never taken the time to actually go watch one. And so uh, we had a Saturday night off, and um, I took my son Griffin, and, and I said, you know what? I think the World of Outlaws are running up at Dubuque. We ate dinner. We jumped in the car, ran up there. An hour later, we're there. I'll give you two guys one guess as to who set fast time for the World of Outlaws show that night. Tell me in. He's at this table. I I'm pretty uh, sure. Is that right? It wasn't Spence. me. <laughs> yep. yep. Bad morning. Yep. No, no, actually, Spencer <laughs> set fast time. Spencer That's right. set fast That's time. Right. That's awesome. Yep. God, that show. is awesome, is that right? man. Mm -hmm. yep. How do you like that? It was, uh, it was, it, it was something because I was obviously, I mean, I, he's still young, but it was, I mean, I didn't have that much experience with them guys. So 
coming out, and I I don't have a whole lot of experience at Dubuque, anyways. But right. so yeah, it was pretty cool. Track. It was Got impressive. It. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was impressive. Against and it was uh, Mike Marlar, Shep. You know, yeah. all all of those guys. Marlar ended up going and yeah. going on and winning the championship that year. So yeah. there were a lot of heavy hitters at that show. So. So yeah, I remember that, and, and uh, I forgot I'm about like, that. Is it, hey, Spencer. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that down. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta mention that. It's very cool. Tell me about, uh, you know, I sent you a text, and I want to get a little information on your bio, and you sent me a text back. I said, married or single? I, and oh, I'm thinking boy. it's coming back single, <laughs> and you put down girlfriend Jesse might as well be married. Yeah. She, All right. I so, know. I'll get home and. We gonna be Should, going to a wedding I'll soon? Kick my butt if I don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> you need any groomsmen, groomsmen uh, Pat and I will. That's uh, right. Go, That's please. right. No problem at all. That's right. So you say you've been racing since 2012. When you started out, what were you driving, Spence? I, uh, I had one or two times in a legend car up okay. at uh, just practice rounds, and then my dad threw me right in a late model. Oh man! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. So that's impressive. Me by in, fire, you know. Yeah, threw me in uh, in the end of 2011, and then uh, just to practice or whatever around sure. Tipton and stuff like that. We got a bunch of practice in, and then 2012, we he started me in the back and nice. threw me out there, and boom! Nice. So here we go. Yep, here we go. Man, that's something else. That's impressive. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> so hey, talking about your uh, sponsors, you get on that race car. I know one of them is. Uh, you know, uh, Scott Relk, you know, oh, yeah. Relk Concrete Construction, yeah. and he is a big fan. You know, I kind of laugh because, uh, I think sec- well, first and second night at Davenport Speedway this year was ice cold. And yeah. I have got four layers of uh, clothing on, and, you know, my hands are so cold, I can't even feel the mic. And uh, Scott Relk said, hey, Shane, you need another shirt? And I said, yeah, I'll take a shirt. And he said, I'll be right back. And he ran over to your trailer and got me a 3X hoodie, <laughs> come back, and, and gave it to me. And, man, that kind of got me through the night. But Scotty, uh, you know, the point being, he loves dirt track racing. And, you know, it's always good to have sponsors like that. And, you know, he loves your car. I mean, when when we're uh, in the winter months, we're out there racing our little slot cars. You know, that's all Scotty Relk talks that's about. Right. Yep, Spencer that's right. Spencer Dirks, you know. Yeah. So good to have people like that. Uh, other sponsors you got, Pleasant Valley Ready Mix. Uh, you're in the concrete business. So that yep. probably helps out a little bit. Yes, it does. <laughs> Rockstar Energy Drink. You do you drink that stuff? No. Okay. <laughs> I do not. But it's the uh, Pepsi. Bill Johnson. He's a Pepsi distributor. So we we had Pepsi and Mountain Dew on there years before, or whatever. But we just thought we wanted to do something different. And and Stefan, uh, yeah, Cam Concepts or whatever. He uh, he came up with that cool logo for it is very oh, cool. man. It is put cool. it on there, and we've ever had we've had it there well, since. If, if you don't drink it, and I know he doesn't drink <laughs> I it, I can't drink it. I call dibs. <laughs> yeah. Pat, you're on it. That's right. I got a couple of cans out in the truck. Right, I know that. You know, I stopped in one time. There's a little place called the Wake Coffee Company over in Rock Island. I stepped in there in the morning, and I'm looking up there at those drinks. And hey, I'm old school, so you know, I seen one that was uh, I think it was called Purple Passion or yeah. Purple Rain, and I got it. Well, I didn't know those things had energy drink in them. And I don't need any energy drink. <laughs> and so, and I start drinking that stuff. And I, man, this is great. I don't know what they got in this stuff, but I feel alive. That's right. And then, you That's know, right. I thought, ah, these, you know, it's got energy drink in there. And, you know, I'm not supposed to drink that stuff. So uh, all those hard years of racing, you know, I've got heart disease. So it gets my heart all revved up. And the doc says, stay away from that stuff. But uh, it's good. Hey, Linquist Ford. Uh, you guys have always been a Ford family. Absolutely. So it had to be Fords. There wasn't going to be Bob Erickson Chevy on that no, thing. It's nope. No. <laughs> Ford, okay. Uh, Circle Tap and Maloney's Pub, where are they at, Spence? So Circle Tap is right down, down the street. The road. Across the street. They got the good ribs, right? Yep, they got the right. good ribs. Oh, at least man. Circle. And uh, Maloney's is in Eldridge. They don't give is. you free ribs for the sponsor, do they? No. <laughs> right, I can get a ticket from you for Pat and I. <laughs> TNG Refurbishing. Um, that's Greg McKnight. Uh, oh, that's, right. Uh, I know Greg. Usling stepdad, but yeah, they uh, he's he uh, he uh, Nate wasn't racing anymore, so he you know I mean wants to really, stay involved exactly wanted to stay involved, and we've we've always uh, liked Nate and his dad or whatever, so we uh, put him on there, and he's always been a supporter of us from the beginning. So American Topsoil, yep. and uh, what do we got? Uh, Rocks Platinum Construction, yep, and then uh, Tegler Wreck and Crane. Now, Buddha Transmissions, tell me about that. Um, <clears throat> Buddha, he just, he's a, a good friend, uh, just yeah. just helps us out with transmissions and stuff yeah, like that. He, he's that. a good guy. 
and then H and H towing. Yep. Wow. You got a lot of good sponsors on yeah. there, and I know it's you know back necessity. when we raced, Pat. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of money to make the world go round. Yes, it does. Yes, and it so, does. Uh, we needed all the sponsorship help we could get. Yep, without a doubt. So, Spencer, other than sponsors, tell us about the team. Who's who are the who's the driving force and and the the manpower behind the two car operation? Um, obviously, my my parents. Um, I couldn't obviously I couldn't do it without them. It's a it's a family deal. They supply you know I mean the money behind behind the operation or whatever. My mom, my dad, my mom. Uh, Lisa, my dad, Steve, um, and then my brother, Justin, he's always a big supporter. Even though he's got three wild kids, he uh, comes whenever he can because uh, they got a lot of baseball and soccer, and they're very talented. So they got a nice – hopefully they got a bright career to get us all out of yeah. debt or something. They'll but, pay for their college. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, and, uh, it's yep. outstanding. And then yeah. – uh, lost my headphones. Uh, uh, Quentin, he, uh, he's in the shop with me. Uh, he comes in after work and in the shop all yeah, the time that's great. Uh, at night. And then Jim, uh, he he's incredible. Dan Hoffman, um, Alan Schmel comes yeah, in every once, while, yeah. every once in a while. And then uh, um, Zach, he comes to the – Zach from Link was forward. He comes and supports us at the races. Uh, Payway, Matt Payway, he obviously he, – he he says he's my PR guy. <laughs> 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 but, um Yep, they're uh, they're just big supporters. Everybody around us just, I mean, they love it. We don't, we all do this as a basically a family. You know, what I mean, we're, sure. we're a big family, just trying to do what we love. So that's good. And and you guys do it right. And so to finish the story about the Dubuque race, so I'm there with my, ooh, let me see, he's 12 now, and that was what three years ago. So he was nine. First okay. time he had ever been to a race and took wow. him to a World of Outlaw Late Model Show. Okay. And you guys were getting ready. Spencer had just set fast time. We're walking by, said hi to his mom and dad. And, and of course, I've known them for a long time now. And then, and I don't remember exactly who it was, but but some one of your crew guys went in and got a Spencer Dirks Hot Wheel oh. and brought out and gave it to my son in the pits. Yeah. And I tell you what, lifelong fan. Lifelong, lifelong fan. fan. So in, in Griffin, my, my younger son, still has that Spencer Dirks Hot Wheel up on his shelf. So. That's cool. Um, that's a testament to the nice people. And, and your mom, Lisa, uh, brought us T-shirts one time when we ran into you guys up at Knoxville. So there you go. Really, wow. really nice people. Yeah. I remember three years ago when we were running slot cars, remember I won the championship and what that's I had right. for a body. That's right. Yeah. Number 29. <laughs> that's right. Man, I had a yep. uh, vision. I knew it was going to happen. Yep. But, uh, yeah, you know, you're, you're just a lot of fun to watch. So, uh, so far, Spence, uh, what do you think your best moment in racing has been? Um, I would say my best one – I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I have a best one yet. I would Good. say, I just every time I could, every time I'm able to go out there, I would say. I mean, I wouldn't say it would be on the racetrack. I would say be in the pits. You know I mean, being around, like being around all them people. You know cool. I mean, is being able to do something that I love, absolutely love, and being around, surrounded by great people. That would be the best moment. I I would say. All right. That's standing. And then what about your worst moment? Do you have one of those yet? Uh, definitely when I got Donald Neal at uh, West Liberty. So <laughs> I got <laughs> put in the wall and broke my arm. So yeah. oh, that one still. That was tough. Yeah. Ouch. Now, Ouch. do you have a favorite track yet, Spence? <laughs> um, uh, I don't I would I Back then, I would say West Liberty just because I was running there all the time. Nice. And I would kick butt there, you know what I mean? But. Now, I mean, obviously they're closed. So if I had to choose one now, I'd probably still it'd probably be Davenport. Just I'd be able it's, Davenport. It's I got the monkey off my back finally. So yeah. I used to be terrible there. But, really? Nice. Well, so. you sure you're not now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let's do a section of, uh, that I love um, when we come to whenever we bring a guest in. One of my favorite parts of our show, and that is. Tell us about how you got the number 29. Tell us the story behind the 29. I love um, hearing stories about how teams get their numbers. So the number 29 came from my grandpa, um, okay. my uh, my grandpa Martin. Uh, he he had the number 29. He raced at number 29. Um, I, I think so. My my dad would correct me. He'll correct me later <laughs> if that's wrong. But uh, he so that's how we got 29 was because of uh, my grandpa. And then obviously my dad – <laughs> took that on and then my brother or whatever so my brother i mean he made made it into what the 29 was the one on asphalt and then i just my dad put it on me and there we are uh, we very cool we took it took it on from there okay so. 
And, and what's the best thing you like about racing? The best thing I like about racing is just the adrenaline. Yeah. Um, 100 percent it's it's a rush that you'll never experience somewhere else so yeah. getting getting up there on a lip or, or running right around right on the tires or ripping just, the lip yeah. up there man yep. and spencer right, you are a high side guy i've <laughs> watched uh, certain people over the years and some people are catfish they like getting down yep. there on the bottom bottom feeders or you know hugging the tires and uh spence you're one of those guys you know, high side man yeah. dance with the devil get up there and High, wide, and handsome. Absolutely. Well, and, and, and don't they say that, that, that the high side sells T-shirts and the bottom pays the bills? <laughs> yeah, Isn't that how that old right. saying goes? Probably. You know, and Jack Hewitt used to have a saying about that, too, and I can't remember what it was, but, uh, you know, he, he loved the high side. So he was making fun of the people that weren't running up on a cushion all the time. You know, I have this theory. I have this theory that you can tell, even if you've never been to a track before, you can tell how old the driver is by where he's running. <laughs> and the higher they run, the younger they are. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, when you break bones and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Spencer's yeah, not. He agrees. Yeah. He agrees. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, do you have any other hobbies other than racing? Uh, RC cars. I do right. that during the winter. I know. I see you at the hobby shop. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Uh, there, uh, used to work out there at the hobby shop. When I got done running your body uh, three years ago, he asked, uh, you know, if he could have that body. And so he ran Spence's nice. body. Yep. Two years ago. Yep. And so we've been passing that thing around. Everybody wants to run yep. that 29. <laughs> uh, do you have any favorite food? You got a place around here. I mean, you talked about uh, one of your sponsors. They got great ribs, man. Them things right. fall off the bone. Absolutely. That's uh, my dad that goes there all the time uh, with Jim and Dan and yeah. and Quentin Gustafs up there. But, yeah, they have good food, good ribs and burgers and stuff like that. But nah, any, anything, I'll eat it. My girlfriend will yeah. And say it, it, if there's food in front of me, I'll eat it. So. Come on. <laughs> you know you can do that when you're young. Now, I Kelly, know, right? when we get older, yeah, work you know, out. your metabolism slows <laughs> to a crawl. You drive, you drive by a drive through <laughs> and you gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> you just look at it too long and you're like, you sniff that donut yeah. and gain weight. <laughs> no joke. You know, and the thing about it is, uh, here I am all these years later. I'll be 62 next year. And I still get nervous on race day. Now, it's not uh, nerves of fear because I never had any fear, but I just, my stomach would turn a little bit and so i never ate till after the races and uh today you know here we are broadcasting and announcing and on race day i can't eat so when i leave uh you know friday nights you know as an example davenport i'm heading uh down uh, locust street here and you know you got a wendy's and you got uh taco bell uh, taco <laughs> bell uh you know you end up stopping and you shouldn't do that and so uh uh, you know, if you do that, you're going to look like me, so don't do that. <laughs> I eat during the race, so. so it, Can you really? Do, oh, do yeah. you really, Spence? Oh, yeah. Come that's on, nice. man. Oh, yeah. That's like my, that, you're like the opposite. I'm like, I have to. Just eat. Because it's, it's just busy. You feed that you know? adrenaline. Exactly. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I get I that. I like that. Absolutely. So, so, hey, dirt track hot dog. You, you cruise up there, you get a hot dog, and you can only have three toppings. What are you going to put on that thing? Um, Probably... Ketchup, uh, onions, and uh, I don't know what's at, what's at the table. I know. Yeah, they got that pickly <laughs> stuff there that's probably dried, and they put water around it. <laughs> it it's wet. It's and, a, uh, it's I'd all that stuff. Yeah. It all tastes good. Though. Yeah. And I got to tell Something you, you know, it. if you go up to Wrigley Field to a Cubs game, Oof. you can't put ketchup on your hot dog. No. That's right. That's a Chicago thing. They'll yeah, be out. It is. That's you right. can, but they're going to give you shit about it. That's right. <laughs> You're never going to live it. They're going to give you shit about it. You know, that's, that's, that's one funny thing. Uh, I'm the same as you. When when it comes to race day, I'll eat before, but once I'm at the races, I'm in, I'm in race mode, and I'll eat afterwards, but I never think about eating. So that was one area that it's always nice to have somebody around, you know, a my mom did it for a long time um, where she would always make sure that I had something to eat. Yeah. You know, well, here, you better eat something. And I, yeah. you know, I would always be like, oh, yeah, I guess I better eat. Yeah. <laughs> and I find myself still doing that now, today. That's you, like my mom. She, uh, she's got a, I mean, if we have, we have like a, a buffet in the trailer for man. everybody. I, I have know where to, to go. That's I awesome. have to. It's, yep. <laughs> there's, I mean, I always constantly, I'll go out and qualify, come back in and get like a sausage stick or something. And then nice. go out in a heat race nice. and then get a plate of cheesy potatoes or something like that. Awesome. Yep. Yep, and then I can see your mom taking care of you. Absolutely. Yep. Lisa's, Lisa's good stock. <laughs> Got any questions on there yet, Pat? Uh, you know, I've seen different questions that people I have, have been asking. I have a question quick. Yeah. Um, 
you got to have a, I mean, I, I can just envision, I've never raced a car before, but who's, who's the guy that when you pull in or that you see, like you see that you got, there's got to be somebody out there that you want to race that you're like, okay, like this, so, you know what I mean? Something that there's got to be, Jax, there, yep. you got any guys like that? Yeah, there of is. Course. So I would say like weekly stuff, weekly stuff, I would say, um, Oh, I'll give him a shout out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now I know what to do. Yeah. Uh, probably Timmy Current and Ryan Doom. Yeah, most yeah, definitely, just because. Nice. Uh, he. Uh, <laughs> it's the same competitive. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Right? That, that's absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, but sure. uh, no guys like that. You know what I mean? The guys that you can kind of honestly go back and forth with over like Facebook and stuff like that. Just just to give you a little bit of fired up and stuff like that. But I wouldn't say I would go after him. I would say I just. I mean. I want to win. You know what I mean? I'm, sure. I don't well, care. they do too, though. So that's what oh, makes absolutely. it great, right? Absolutely. That you know you guys are both going to bring your best Absolutely. Game. And that's like, yeah. we went to Independence for a modified show. And I love Independence. Minutes. Yeah. How do you like that, Spence? I love it. I've only oh, been there yeah. twice. Oh. But uh, nice. it was a good show. Or actually three times. But that was my, I haven't been back in a while or whatever. And that was, it was a thousand win for modified. So I went up there and and Very nice. Simpson was up there. You so. got second to Chris Simpson yeah. that night. So. I remember that yep. night. So that would be. You know, but Simpson started up front. He did. He yeah. started on the pole. So it kind of, you know, <laughs> I started ninth. So I got to him, but I didn't have anything when Laps I got to him. Laps are winding down, man. Yep. You know, so. and, and you talk about that. You know, you use up your tires getting through the field. Mm -hmm. And, man, when you get to the leader, sometimes you don't have anything left. Because he's been out there, you know, uh, taking him. care of his tire management. Absolutely. And he's been bobbing and weaving exactly. and getting through the field. And yeah. Right, hustling. Yeah, hustling. Uh, Cole Palmer says uh, Spencer the Palmer RC Racing misses you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure come winter time you'll be back oh, at yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, favorite music? You listen to anything on the way to the racetrack? You like country or rock? Yeah, or? anything. I'll I'll listen. <laughs> Quentin O'Malley will definitely say that I listen to anything. My music selection goes from high to low real quick. Yeah, so. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> All right. So Spencer, tell uh, tell us and and the fans watching and listening, where can we get Spencer Dirk's gear? Where can we get the Spencer gear? Um, you can just you can message Jesse or um, or me on Facebook, um, preferably Jesse because I I forget very easily with his with work. But uh, and Spence um, on your website, you know, you have a very nice Dirk's, website, uh, twenty nine dot com. Yeah, can you can get the uh, race wear on there too? Uh, I don't have it set up yet. Um, okay, I got to contact Ben on that. But uh, otherwise, we have it at the track or at the shop. So if you just very nice. message her or me on Facebook right now, you can we'll ship it for. Okay. I mean the same price and stuff like that. But and then you remember what a hoodie costs or a t-shirt costs? Uh, just roughly. No. We're not going to hold you to it. I don't, I don't All right. remember. <laughs> but I tell you what, you, you always have first class gear. I know you have hats, yeah. t shirts, sweatshirts, and the like. And, and speaking of social media, um, I'd be remiss, and, and we're three quarters of the way through the show, and I haven't mentioned it. Make sure that you like and share down at the bottom. We're on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Um, Spencer, help me out. What some of the other social Instagram. media? Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, make sure you like and share our video and Spencer. Uh, it helps us and it helps the show and it helps the racing in the area. Absolutely. And we'd like to set a new record this week. And if you share it with all the right sites, or right. you have the numbers, just go, go through the roof. Yeah, absolutely. And help us out. So, Spence, tell us uh, something nobody knows about you. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. Do you like to hunt? No. You, you got a dog named Boo, or <laughs> no? I had a dog named Diesel. He uh, passed away here a little bit ago. He's my buddy, but uh, um, no, I just I'm an animal lover. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, there's I'm pretty simple. I I love to race, whether it's an RC car in the winter or yeah. or our kind of guy, uh, exactly, or being at the racetrack during the summer. It's kind of kind of my thing. I'm not a. I used to love sports, but that's I don't know. I the older I got, uh, yeah, <laughs> the more I I don't know. Hey, race is a sport, so yep. you got uh, you got it going on with that. Yep. And I've been racking my brain. I'm pretty sure that I coached Spencer in baseball one year, like like Coach Pitch. <laughs> I think he was on my son Duncan's team, but <laughs> don't quote me on that. Yeah, so, <laughs> back in the day, back right. in the day. So so, what is a race? So if if you had a magic wand and you got to to choose a race, one race to run up front, if not win at, what would it be? Um, right now I would say probably Davenport just because I have, 
I mean, I've got the modified wins and stuff like that. I've got I mean, a fall bash, but I just I would say Davenport just because I'm from here. You know, what I mean, that's nice. kind of like the ultimate home turf. You know, what I mean, the, nice. Got all the, your fans there. Exactly. That's like the Dave, the ultimate that's cool. David Goliath. You know, moment because I'm not a big guy. You know what I mean? I I go and I can run run on the weekends and stuff like that. I ran up there at Mississippi Thunder, but I mean, it took everything I could possibly do to take off from work to go and do that. Right. You know what I mean? And so it, it takes a lot out of my team and stuff like that. Cause we are, you know I mean, all of everybody on my team and supports me. They all, you know I mean, we all work. You know I mean, we don't, we don't travel up and down the road 24 seven. And Spence right now, now so. you know, since the whole family's in business, what business, I mean, do you have your own company now? Yeah. Yep. And, and it is what? So Tell it's called that. Dirks Associates. So I pour uh, residential flat work or commercial flat work. Um, so I do all of your, um, anything from your basement floors, garage floors, stoops, patios, um, colored concrete, stamped concrete, um, commercial stuff. So I'll do some streets and stuff like that. Street patches, not paving, but, uh, but yep, stuff like that. So we'll yeah. do that all across the Quad Cities. Clinton. Very cool. So now uh, cool. your work season, does it run from like April to October or yeah. what? So from when the frost goes out of the ground to okay. when the frost goes in the ground, that's basically how we basically. say it. You just okay. describe racing seasons. Spencer. Basically. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. You, you yeah. got to get, get it so you can do <laughs> that know. in winter. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah that would work exactly. out a lot better. Yeah. yeah. He should do that down in Florida or yeah. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> get Absolutely. out of there before it gets hot. That's go back right. when it cools down. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, do you have anybody you admire in life and look up to? Um, I said this the last time I was on the show, but um, uh, there's probably two people. One, um, the guy that used to drive the 58, uh, Ray Gus Jr. Ray Gus Jr. Ray Gus okay. Jr. He, um, was, he was a king. He, he was. He was just because when I was coming up, he was a man still. You know what I mean? He was a man? He was, he was always a man until he left. You know yeah. what I mean? And just because whenever I would walk up to him, he always had, he always had time for a kid like me. And I, and I was a kid, you know, yeah. you know I still, I mean, still right. young, but I was, you know, I mean, 14, 15, 16, 17, looking up to this kid, talking to, you know, I mean, a guy that's won everything and everything, everything, you know, NASCAR, I mean? exactly. IMCA, Dunham. and always, always, always drove me with respect, no matter, you know what I mean? I was a young punk. That's so right. I, you know, I mean, some kids or some people, they would, and rough you up to kind of, you know, I mean, this is the way you, my respect sure. is to you. you yeah. know, I mean, he would, he would leave your room. He would race you how you, he wanted to be raised. Bring it home alive. Nice. Exactly. And the yeah. other guy nice. who is very controversial, but is Blomquist just because yeah. of the stature. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. Just no matter where you go, there's always, he's always in the conversation of, of being there. You know what I mean? He's, he's not there now, but he's. You know what? He's, it's he's just like he when is. I talk about Gary Webb and Scott Bloomquist, yeah. you got to respect. I mean, they've done it all. Absolutely. So they got nothing to prove to nobody. If, if either one of them guys never won another feature, I mean, they're, they're still at the top of the list. They've won everything. They've won so, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got to tell you a story about Ray Gus Jr. You know, we went to school together, grew up together as yep. kids. And uh, first day of high school, Ray had a uh, 68 Chevelle Red One with a. <laughs> 355 in it, and I had to, I was a Ford man, so I had a Ford with a big block in it, and I just happened to have a bottle of bleach in the back of my car, so we got a little bleach pit going on, we're out there doing smoky burnouts, little did I know, I'm looking around the parking lot, and I thought, well man, I see a lot of cars, but I don't see any students yet, well, they were having a teacher's conference uh -oh. before the first day of school, uh -oh. so Ramey and I get in class, and the principal comes on the sound system, and he says, with the following two students, please report to my office. You know, Ray Gus Jr. and Shane Davis. And I thought, oh, man, we're in trouble now. Now, we got a, we got a chewing by the principal. I got to tell you, when our dads got there, oh. and Ray Gus Sr., Ray's already racing, I'm racing. And I remember Ray Sr. Uh, saying to Ray, uh, my God, don't you get enough of that on the weekends, and then you got to come out here. So we got kicked out of school the first week of school. Oh, and, but, oh boy. But Ray was one of those guys to this day. He always brought the car home alive. And it Absolutely. didn't matter. When he drove for the Eckriches, he won. When he drove his own cars, he won. Right. When he drove, uh, you know, for Kenny Roberts. I mean, he's the only guy that ever won three IMCA late model national championships in a row. Right. Wow. I mean, that's something. 
Yeah. And, you know, it, it, that's funny that you say that because I, I get asked, so I have groups of friends and a lot of them are non-racing friends and they don't often don't understand racing. And it's a whole nother market that we can expand into from, from a fan base. But, but when they, they talk about, about racing and they say, you know, come the off season and we start slot car racing or, or RC racing. And, and I get this a lot. I get a, don't you get enough of that during the summer? And it's like, yeah, you know, no, no. I mean, it's Tuesday night and I'd be racing something if we're marvels or yeah. that was one of my favorite comments um, growing up at Jeff Swindell said R racers or racers. Yeah. He said, we'd be racing marbles if we didn't have anything else. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and yeah, so it's, uh, it's why I hear you when it comes to, to, um, to RC racing right. or slot car racing. And so right. Shane and I slot car race because it's fun and cheap. And, and I also get asked that, you know, I raced go-karts for a little while. Um, and, and I, you know, I got asked um, by some of the go-kart racers, like it was, they were surprised that I would jump into a go-kart and race because I race sprint cars. And I'm like, dude, I'll race anything, yeah. you know. <laughs> so we cares. race wheelbarrows so if you have more Race's than one of them, racing, you know. Man. That's that the first just... thing you go to Walmart and you see the, the, you know, the old lady carts. And it's like, that's why they only have one of them at a time, <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise we'd be racing yeah. the damn things mm -hmm. around the around Walmart. So we had somebody ask Spence, where are you going to be at this weekend? Yep. I'll be at the Lucas races uh, Friday and Saturday okay. at Farley and, and Burlington. Okay. If they don't rain out or whatever. But All right. Man, yeah. that'd be a great I'll be there. Uh, And then Sunday, you're going to take it easy. Yeah. Sunday, I'll uh, unload and wash everything up probably. And we'll, I mean, hope we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> La yesterday, yeah. I, was, I found myself at a go-kart track. Clear so up to Dubuque. Nice. Yeah. I, nice. I, I I ran there twice last year, and I was terrible. Oh, so. then you better bring her back <laughs> I up know. There, man. You're dialed in. <laughs> so, yeah. so what was terrible about, about Dubuque? Was it you or, oh, or I just not I don't adapting? Know. I, I, uh, I love Dubuque. Like, I physically, as a driver, mentally, oh, my kind of deal. Like you know what I mean? Just, oh, yeah, absolutely. But my car right now, I, I wouldn't say my car right now. I just... I didn't I didn't race there enough you know what I mean one or I the first time I came from like 12th because I had to start last for because of the points deal but they're not last but 12th was the highest I could start sure. so I started 12th and I got up to like third but I mean that's not bad but the la the next time I came I finished like sixth or seventh so I was I mean not very good for a weekly program but I just would say I need something, something for a track like that, like a Makokita or a Dubuque, that a, the two tracks that I struggle with, like that sandy, gritty, dirty, oh, you know yeah. what I mean, stuff. Yeah. Something that I struggle with as a driver and a car, I've always struggled with. You know what I mean? A big, fast, open, super, you know what I mean? Like a sure. Farley or a West Liberty or an Oskaloosa or mm -hmm. Davenport, something like that, I excel. You know what I mean, somewhere where you can be smooth, top notch. But the Dubuque, where you gotta just, Go in there and just, I mean, not care about your right rear quarter. I'm where you uh, got to throw the car. Yeah. more, you mean throw the car? So definitely, yeah. definitely more throw your car, step on the gas, and have instinct traction. You know what I mean, I'm not. See that? I don't know if it's like left side weight, something, something. I mean, something like that. It's got to. It's just something driver car setup wise that I don't have figured out yet. So interesting. Well, you know, I look at different drivers out there, and I've always said that uh, you got to have all the pieces of the puzzle and. Your modified program, you have all the pieces to the puzzle. You guys got it going on. And your late model program, you're real close. You're getting there. So you guys, uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Hey, Spence, uh, I, I wanted to ask you something, too. I was thinking about this this week. What kind of RPMs you guys turn out there on time trials for uh, Lucas Oil and World Outlaw? Um, I think I, when I, if I remember right, I was like 85. Okay. 84 for, right. which is, I mean, we try to shoot for 82, 83, 84, right All around right. there, just because you're not really, you're kind of gear bound the more you get that. So sure. right around in that area, you know I mean? You don't really want to go higher than 85, you blow it up. And, and then you're modified. Uh, what do they get you shipped at on those 60, mods? 64. Yeah. 64? 64. 64. I don't know. I don't oh, okay. check. I mean, obviously, nice. we've never changed it. So. Very right. nice. 64. Okay. Uh, what what do you have for an upcoming schedule? So we're we're I can't believe we're in the middle of May already. Yeah. Uh, it seems like especially compared to 2020, which racing was everything was was very spontaneous and off the cuff. What's the rest of your season look like? What um, are you going to try to focus on, or what are you going to make sure? You so do? so like last year, everything was kind of messed up because of COVID. There wasn't a whole lot of late model racing last year. I mean, there was, but there wasn't. But um, uh, this year. 
there's a lot more late mall stuff going around. So I'm going to run the two Lucas races this weekend um, if it doesn't rain. And then the following weekend is that some of that uh, the Malvern Bank stuff comes in. So it starts like rolling at, in, yeah. At Columbus Junction, um, Darlington, and, and Vinton is the three shows or whatever. I don't know if I'll go to all three. I might just pick and choose what I want. We'll just kind of see after Columbus Junction. If I do go, um, but otherwise – uh, after that, I don't, I haven't looked that far ahead either, but, um, <laughs> that was kind of my, in my head this week or whatever. So now the Malvern bank, uh, super late model series, what do you have to run on your engine to make it Malvern bank legal? So if I was going to run an open motor, which we did last year, yeah. um, we have to run a 1.950, uh, a cup or a restrictor plate, restrictor plate and yeah. then three, uh, one O's or whatever in the, in the, uh, hey, in the you motor, can drill so. that full holes. Yeah, can't you? you could, but <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, you know, the bolts hold your carburetor. Up and That's right. Just drill them right down through the, uh, through the studs and yeah. get all the air you want. It won't idle too good. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. I put that restrictor yeah. plate in, but it shook loose. So yeah, the center of those studs <laughs> fell out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we're ready to wrap things up, uh, in closing. Do you have anything you'd like to say, Spence? Um, just thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. It uh, helps me out. And, yeah. Uh, just it's good for the Quad Cities and good for racing around here. So. Right. You're a good guest. But, we loved having you. Yeah. And yeah. I think you're. I think you're great for racing in the area. Yeah, thank you thank for you. joining the show. Also, please um, like, share uh, on all of the social media. Like I said, we're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Please like and share. It helps us all. Yeah. Okay. Kelly, um, big boss man. Yeah, just thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. It. I'll get you so that tire. You I, I want that tire for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Got to sign it too, though. Yeah, I'm gonna make a home for it right here. You're not gonna put it on one of your service fans. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. You okay. just, you're just gonna have to wait and see. It might, it it's might gonna be in a glass case right over here. It might be the road tire. Nice. Absolutely. Who knows, right? All nice. right. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. Like Pat said, share that thing so we can get all the. Uh, Get the numbers up as good as we can. We want to set a new record this week. Yep. We've been I, on a tear. Yep. The Each week our numbers week. have been increasing. Yeah. So, and, and a lot of people don't realize that we're also on YouTube. Um, we also have this show on YouTube, and it's a little bit easier to find and share on YouTube. And and so even if you see us on Facebook, check us out on YouTube as well, DoneRightTV.com. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. God bless all you great race fans, and I'll be seeing you around the track.